It is Monday morning and this is Off the Press, uh, the program where we take a look at what's going on in our countries through the national dailies. And with me to do so is um, Libros Oshoma in studio. Good to still have you, Libros. My pleasure. And of course, Ai would be joining us remotely from Berlin. Good to have you, Ai. Good to be here, Amaka. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, we have a couple of papers to review this morning, but we will begin with the Punch newspaper. It would be as displayed. It says, Reps summon banks and others over $30 billion forex racketeering on page 34. Try me if my alleged link with Hush Puppy is proved. <laughs> <laughs> That's Dugara speaking there on page 13. Ngige approved 3.4 billion naira NSITF uh, training fund, says uh, that's according to management on page 30. Want to make killer soldiers can't face terrorism charge before court martial, says Falano on page 11. And of course, we have the COVID updates. You can see Nigeria has passed the 28,000 mark. So we are 28,711 confirmed cases, um, 11,665 discharged, and 645 people have died from COVID-19 in Nigeria. And we also have the global figures there for you to see. Big story for the punch. APC power blocks shift battle for parties control to state. That story um, is on page two of the Punch newspaper. Uh, Zampara, Ondo, Imo, warring groups defy Buhari's order to withdraw suits, party to revisit membership um, register without former and recent, recent defectors' names. Interesting. We have a picture story also there. Um, you can see for yourself. I'm afraid it's, the characters are quite uh, not legible. But anyways, 632 students fail by exams. Libras, can you hear that? Says law school. is on page six. Uh, COVID-19 kills NCDC supervisor, task force vice chair, and ex Lasmira boss. That's on page nine, I believe. Um, I apologize, the characters are quite, not quite uh, legible this morning. Please raise, please raise the alarm over planned Ogun court attack on page 13. It's not clear. <laughs> Missing in Benue boat accident, Lagos toll rises to seven, um, four and five. Last month, officials tab, uh, stabs living, living lover commits suicide on page four. Ajibumi's family deputy governor disagree on Fidel lockout. And these are more we have on the newspaper there on page eight. All right, we will begin this morning with you, Ai. I don't know which of the stories is catching your attention, but we have a couple of them. Which one do you want to begin with? Well, I'd like to start with so the fact that COVID has um, resulted in the death of several people, NCPC supervisor, the vice chair of, uh, I think, the Benue task force and other people. I just get the sense over the weekend to listening to friends at home that th this, this virus is coming closer. It's, um, you're now hearing people that you know who have it um, or who have friends of friends who have died of it. So it's, it's really scary. And then when you put that together with the number of governors who are getting this uh, COVID uh, and then knowing that noting from maybe their previous um, engagements prior to the announcement that they've not been uh, following the guidelines, the public guidelines for, for example, wearing your face mask when you're out in public. So it's really scary. And when you link that to conversations about schools opening, you know, I think people need to wake up. This disease is actually real. And we need to take it seriously. And a lot more needs to be done. It's good to hear that places like Cross River have be, have admitted that there's now COVID and are beginning to take steps. Wow. That's a good one. But we really need to be investing more in behavioral change communication, honestly. This thing is going to be with us for a long time. And if we're talking about opening schools, 
we really need to be careful. Personally, I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hearing that in places like the UK, they're waiving uh, the A-level entry exams that are supposed to allow students to move from A-levels into university. We're hearing almost the same thing in the US where they're, they're cancelling the, the, the need to have SAT, uh, scholastical aptitude test, before you can go into university. Why are we putting our families in danger? When you link that also with the fact that you're hearing that people who, who test positive don't want to go into these isolation centers, the whole thing is becoming quite chaotic uh, and actually not very, what's the word? I'm not feeling very confident about our chances anymore. Even though the death rates are low, what we're also not tracking is the, what's the word I would call it, associated death. So the deaths of people who don't go to the hospital, how, who is tracking those ones, the ones who are too scared to go anywhere, or the ones who are dying of other diseases who don't want to go to the hospital because they don't want to catch COVID. So all that we're missing. So we might look at the numbers of deaths and say this is low, but I'm scared that that might not be the full picture. Mm -hmm. It may not be a full representation of what it is. Yeah. All right, let, let, let me uh, turn to Libras. And, yeah. Uh, same, same, almost um, same senti sentiment. Mm. And then to use that word that you and I uh, we don't like, don't, don't want to hear. <laughs> Not um, English. Uh, this morning in perfect <laughs> stimulacrum with uh, I's position right. on, on, on reopening of schools. Um, it's almost as if, and, and like I told you earlier, it's almost as if government attitude is giving the impression that, you know, um, there is more to COVID than you know, they tell us yeah. when the numbers were lower, we completely locked down. Now we are not doing anything differently from what we were doing when we locked down. Now we have gradually, it's almost as if everything is returned to normal now, uh -huh. apart from people who are taking, you know, personal precaution. And then we say, okay, we want to are opening churches. In Abuja, they have opened churches. You saw the pictures of... Um, the National Day of Prayer against COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you look at the pictures, you know that there is no way, there is no way that you say strictly this gathering complied with the regulations. Mm. You know, and then what they tried. About we're talking they tried but <laughs> when you have that kind of gathering it yeah. is almost a practical impossibility in a country like ours where the rules are observing breach. You know, so now you're talking of opening schools for Primary six primary school students, mm -hmm. GS3 students, oh, most and of these SS3. exams. And yet we say JAM conducts um, computer-based exam. So at least this is also a time for us to begin to try some of this assessment. <laughs> Are we for ready? now, <laughs> let's, as we also say, this is a country where we say examination is not a true test of, of one's knowledge. knowledge. So let's use this opportunity to even do continuous assessment. And, you know, see this issue of, oh, you must conduct exams, you must conduct exams, you know, and on the flip side, you say exam is not a true test of one's knowledge. We need to find a way around it. Mm. I know for the private schools, a lot of them have been studying online. But for the public school, that's a total failure on the part of government, just like we talked about health sector. We are praying. Now, yes, prayer is good, but what have we done? That responsibility that God has given to us, mm -hmm. what have we done in terms of providing those basic things that at this level, NMPC had told us that they want to build uh, hospitals in uh, this is geographical uh, uh, region, but yet NMPC has declared deficits. Mm -hmm. You know, so and then lastly on this, I also want to quickly look at the issue of um, the the control for the party structures in APC. Yeah, because when President Muhammad Buhari dissolved the National Working Committee, I did say that for me I wasn't impressed. It was you know one solution you, you know. Uh, decision that he had taken so late. And then he said people who to withdraw their cases in court. Mm -hmm. And I asked the question, there are, in the APC constitution, there are provisions for internal resolution of internal, uh, internal resolution, uh, internal mechanism for resol resolving crisis. And but what had the party done to discipline those who went to court violating and flaunting that regulation? If you didn't do anything, mm -hmm. you didn't use anybody as a deterrent, there is no way this is your new rule will work. Will work. Nobody will, will obey, you know, except those who are close to you who would want to, you know, give the impression that, that they love you more than you love yourself. And so that is why you see now that typical of us would love litigation. Lawyers will make money. Mm -hmm. You know, party members also will spend money. And so that's why, and then the party will do nothing. 
and that's why you 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 have a, a continuous you know show of that shame mm, show of that shame all right hey let me pick your brain or get your thoughts on this story that is staring at me from the punch newspaper uh, try me if my alleged link with hush puppy is proved <laughs> dogara what's your thoughts <laughs> your thoughts i don't know why <laughs> the whole hush puppy I'm, thing how embarrassed I'm, are you <laughs> I, to be honest, I, I don't even want to comment. I feel as if I should be saying I have the right to remove silence because really the whole matter is just so split. Mm. I think there are different dimensions to it. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of people on social media have linked. Can you hear me properly? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. If a lot of people are being linked to Hush Puppy, um, for me, the larger question beyond uh, Farah's Brando is what um, was the the phrase for it, this consumption, conspicuous consumption, mm -hmm. you know, this, this whole activity nature that we have, it for us, like everybody else, I've been drawn to Hot Puppies Instagram page, I've seen all, some of the posts, and I've noted with horror some people that I know who have liked those posts, <laughs> and I'm like, what? Noted you know, with like, horror. This, yeah, it's horror, I'm like, I, these are people that I know, that I consider my friends, and here they are, they've been clicking in the past, obviously, for Hot Puppies, um, crime came to public. Mm. But it just shows how we just watch the world without asking questions. It's the same way we venerate authority when, you know, authority has done anything to earn that respect. Mm. So, again, another angle to look at that, but I find that interesting and it would be good for a debate, you know, one of these days. I wish we would go back to, you know, debating societies in school, maybe on NTA. Since NTA is always looking for content, maybe they should do that <laughs> as a side. Mm. But, you know, sometimes. What, what has Hush Puppy done that the people in NMPC, for example, haven't been doing for years? And when, you, when, they, when they ask that question, what do you say? Mm. You know, it's one, it's one type of theft more legal than the other. But we know that for, we know that for decades, our, our resources have been going down the drain. The World Bank Institute, even internally, many of our civil society organizations, even NATO, mm. has tracked billions of dollars lost, created from our oil revenue. So for me, that's the and then you have process change since we got a new government, new administration in place. What made it possible, maybe between 2011 to 2015, for people to siphon so much money? The, the, the gap in our processes, MPC, have they been closed, closed, or do you want to keep relying on the perception of one person's innocence and integrity? You know. So for me, that's a just question. I hope that the lesson from Hush Puppy will, the less, the, the, one of the lessons from Hush Puppy will be that more Nigerians will be more wary mm. of um, what are, adoring um, conspicuous consumption and will ask more questions about the source of people's wealth, honestly. Right. And then also for politicians, who they go to to, to fund their elections. We're already hearing many stories about how even within the National Assembly, we have known barons, criminals, I think it was a couple of years ago that a senator said, a, former, a senator who used to the police said he saw many criminals in there and they forced the man to draw his statement. But I'm sure he was telling the truth. Hmm. So our politics and crime are obviously tightly woven. And so this is just one case. This is, again, for me, Nigerians should be saying when they go to the polling unit, the polling unit we, these are not the types of we want presenting us. We want a different type of country based on a different type of values. Uh, all right, I, I I share your hope. <laughs> I share your hope. L Libras, you have uh, another item to yes, yeah. Um, Rep Summons Bank orders over thirty billion forest racketeering. That's hush puppish kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, um, and 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 um, and that's why um, also once again I agree with Ai on mm. the fact that we have a lot of hush puppies. Oh, you know, in we have list. a lot of hush a puppies. Lots, yeah? many, many in government in um, public office, even in our private life, we have so many, you know. So, remember the former Emir of Kano did say that um, with um, 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 the um, forest uh, pricing that we have, the pricing regime, mm -hmm. that it was very convenient for somebody to sit down in his garden and make so much money. You know, you know, by via phone calls. You call the CBN, you want forest, you buy at official rates, yeah. and then you go straight to the black market to sell. And so now you find out that, you know, even young boys in the banks, you know, who are into forests, you know, are making so much money. You have traders also, you have businessmen, 
assessing forests, a situation where you, you give forests to people who are going on personal hajj and personal pre pilgrimage, mm -hmm. you know, at official rates, and then why businessmen can't even afford it. It would definitely lead to hush popish kind of forest racketeering. <laughs> Politicians also will latch in on it. And, 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 and until we realize that that's why people will worship wet. Yeah. And that's why, like I told you before, people will latch on to wanting to be in government because government is the only biggest business. Once you're there, it's just imagine how much Igige has, uh, like you said, they approved for NSTIF, uh, mm. and we just talked about the former boss whose properties were seized. You know, when they acquire these properties, and these properties are registered, you know, with the land registry, and, you know, you find one person's name or one company acquiring all of these properties, nobody's asking, how are these wets, mm. you know, who, what is the source of income? And, and when you do that, government even celebrate, and you see, you know, government officials celebrating wets, as we speak now, there's this story about uh, the PA to the president amassing so much wealth and have so much money in his account. And yet he said he claimed that they were gifts from, from uh, <laughs> uh, friends or people who came to see the president. We remember that Yakub, um, um, the former GMD of NMPC, also has stashed off a foreign currency yeah. you know, in a house that um, even the road to the place he, he was bad, but you had, you know, air condition cooling those money. He said they were gifts. EFCC tried it. But what had happened to the PA to the president? Nothing is being done about it. So when you do all of this and the young boys are celebrating posh cars in Abuja, why do you think that the young man on the street also will want to walk? Mm. He will believe the best way, you know, out of his um, misery and poverty is to go into government and then or find, you know, somebody that knows somebody in government. Mm. And once you can assess forests using the official channel and then how you sell, sell it it's immaterial somebody in cbn gets you know a cut of it the bank guy that linked you up get a, a cut of it and now i can also tell you that the national assembly members that are calling for question mm. they're not doing it for altruistic reasons they're not doing it so that we'll put a stop to it they are doing it because they also want to get a slice of the cake that is why after all of these investigations and resolutions are passed there are no sanctions. Nobody mm. is punished to serve as a deterrent to others. And the loopholes are not plugged. So come next year, you will still hear of the same problems. Mm. All right. Um, our problems are quite complex. We, we, I think in the interest of time, we'll move on to another paper. We'll take the Nation newspaper. And um, while they try to display it there, I just be on standby. We'll begin with you. Government to avenge attack on UN workers. President condemns action. Uh, Ajimobis Fidel, or your, uh, your government and family disagree. Fidelity Bank appoints Chiki Obi as chairman. All right. Um, 3.4 billion era controversy. The NSITF chiefs to meet. Then we have the picture story there. Uh, 2,430 virus patients declined to show up for treatment. <laughs> Interesting. APC inaugurates, uh, okay. um, APC inaugurates campaign council for poll today. Obaseki, a uh, bad omen for PDP, says ex-commissioner. Indigenous supports governor's re-election bid. Uh, these are more you'll find inside. Uh, Lagos, they fear stigmatization. That's for those who uh, refuse to show up. 2,000 plus of them. You will be arrested without face masks. Uh, PTF chair, chair attends antivirus prayers. Uh, that's on the front page. Arik and Aero, Dan and others begin Lagos Abuja flights on Wednesday, finally. And then, of course, we have the figures, uh, COVID-19 globally. And um, no, this is locally, actually. We have the uh, globally, yeah. Globally, we are at 11.5 million uh, confirmed cases. We have 535 plus deaths and 6.5 um, million recovered so far. And then in Nigeria, 28,017, as we said earlier. Uh, 645 deaths, and then 11,000 plus active, uh, 11,000 recovered, and 16 plus active cases. New cases as of today, 544. All right, um, we also have uh, 1,864 past law school uh, bar final exams and then Quara and others failed to access 680 
eight billion UBEC funds. That's the reason. Page five. NMPC reshuffles senior managers. Also there, Napoli best place for Osimen. Uh, that's um, something in sports for sports lovers. They're contained in page twenty-eight. Hey, let me start with you uh, before we get on Libras. Sure. What's interesting is the, well, at least not just, I'm curious about the flight resuming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that as well. I saw a chat. In fact, as, as we were, I was listening to you, I was trying to recall all the things I saw in the chat. But the nice, interesting chat, I think, brought out by one of these organizations abroad that sort of tries to rank your exposure, you know. So if you're doing the groceries, if you're in a cinema, and I know that being on a flight was sort of tagged between high high risk to medium risk, um, I guess, depending on. So it would be interesting to see. I've seen a lot of the, I've seen a fan advert that looks very impressive. Seems like they're going to be very orderly. They've asked people to come uh, for their check-in three hours before so that they can do all the temperature checks. But I'm still worried. It would be nice to see, are the airlines going to sell, you know, 100% of their tickets or are they going to only sell, like, you know, I don't know, 50% or 70% so that they can leave the middle seat free for people who are sitting in the economy? But for me, those are more things that I'd like to hear that is going on um, before we jump on the bandwagon. It'll be interesting to see also whether we see a spike. For now, Lagos seems to be the epicenter, but once flights resume between Lagos and other parts of the country, it will be interesting to note if CDC be able to track these. No I'm sorry, NCDC be able to track these numbers for us as well. So, and again, because for me that would be the prelude to opening up international flights. So let's see how local goes, and then we can now see whether we are going to be set. But I I read that the WHO issued a warning um, as domestic flights were resuming in Nigeria. You know, just sort of saying we should be cautious. We are actually just at our peak. I, again, I get the sense that we're modeling ourselves against Europe. Europe started suffering this a lot, lot longer than we did. But because we locked down the same time as they did, they are opening up now because they've gone through their peak. They've managed to flatten their infection rates. They're testing aggressively so they can afford to open. And yet I can feel it here in Berlin that things have opened. Uh, we can see tourists with their maps all over the whole place looking around on their bikes. So we know that things have opened up. But are we ready in Nigeria? Are we just jumping the gun? All right. Let me ask. Let me speak to Libros here on this number of persons that have refused to show up um, in isolation center because of stigma. Uh, I don't know your thoughts, but you know, in the earlier segment, you talked about how there's need for reports to be done, especially on people who have recovered and all of that. And it just occurred to me that indeed stigma is real because just last week. Um, Somebody told us a very reliable information that there's a whole family that contacted, you know, got this virus, everybody in the family. And we said, oh, we're happy to take up that story and, you know, uh, feature this young man. But the person came back and said, you know what, I'm afraid how the rest of the world is going to look at me. So I'm not, I'm not sure I want to do this. So what's your thoughts? Uh, now here we have it, 2,430 2, people have refused to show up and they're saying, basically needs to be done stigma. Yeah, because um, we are not doing enough to create that awareness. Mm. Um, every 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 day, the presidential task force on COVID nineteen will brief, you know, conduct its briefing, and then you know, you now ask yourself how many people have access to those information on selected televisions. Mm. You know, how are we, you know, passing the message to those who do not have access to those. Um, you know, platforms. What is um, the National Orientation Agency doing to create that awareness to sensitize people? That how are you sending that message so that people will understand that you know, if you if you have COVID nineteen or if you've you know be cured of COVID nineteen, mm. it is not you, you you know you are not a danger to people, you know. And you know when you have all of this awareness, massive awareness, and then people actually can feel the steps that you have put in place to ensure that you know their safety is you know paramount to you. Mm people will come out voluntarily to join in that awareness campaign train to say, yes, I was part of this. You see musicians, a few, a couple of them, uh, like um, the 
P Square saying, look, I had this with my family. And that's a massive awareness because he has a lot of followers. You know, I expected the government to latch on to that, to now use, you know, these are volunteers. You can volunteer for programs like this, to now use him to reach out to, you know, his followers and fans, to, yeah. to talk to them. But we're not doing that, except, you know, where there is money. You know, what you will get from it. You now say you budgeted billions to, you know, um, for Peace Square to endorse your campaign. This is a time where you need people to, you know, volunteer for, you know, what are the NGOs doing also to reach out, to talk about these things. All we hear is that doctors are on strike because allowances are not being paid or that information management is also, you know, neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. So there is a whole lot of gap. And then government is so much in a hurry to open up the economy. We are so much in a hurry. And so people will sit back and like, if I know that there is nothing in it for me, or that government is not even protecting me, they've told me to your tent, to Israel. Mm. And so why do I now want to put myself on the stake for the world to condemn? Right. That's, that's why it is like that. Mm -hmm. Onze, thank you so very much, Libras, uh, for your thoughts. And of course, to you, I thank you so very much and keep safe out there too. And, and that's how we're going to wrap it on Off the Press. We'll continue tomorrow at the same time, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Amaka Okoye, reminding you to keep safe out there. We'll continue in the next bulletin.